You're listening to the 123 Show with me, Noreen Mayer, this afternoon. Let's turn to our very first guest and topic of today. In the next 15 minutes or so, we're talking about a common eye condition called dry eyes. And this afternoon, I'm really delighted to be joined with Dr. Kevin Wan, who's an assistant professor at the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Welcome to the program, Dr. Wan. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Good afternoon, Noreen. Thank you very much for the very kind introduction today. We are uh, live this afternoon on Facebook as well. So for our listeners, uh, if you can, join us there. Noreen Mayer on RTHK Radio 3. We've got a bit of a treat. I, I believe uh, Dr. Wan has very kindly prepared a presentation there for us. So we'll be able to understand this condition uh, a bit better. So perhaps let's start with a so very uh, basic question. W- what is dry eye? Can, can you explain it to our listeners? Actually, dry eye is actually the most commonest disease that brings a patient to our eye clinic. In Hong Kong or in the Southeast Asian region, more than actually 40% of the population have some degree of dry eye, you know, because dry eye can range from mild to severe. So what exactly is dry eye? So in front of our eye, the cornea, actually there's a tear film. So perhaps I can show you my, um, just a figure here for better illustrative purposes. So. In this figure, you can see in front of our eye, there's actually a a layer of liquid. Actually, it's actually made up of three different layers. So this is our tears. So it's made up of three different layers, and these are the mucin layer, aqueous layer, and the lipid layer. When any of these layers, um, they decrease either by the increase in evaporation or by the decrease in production, there will not be enough tears in front of our eye. So this is actually what dry eye is. It's a very common condition. So there is... um, different glands in our eye responsible for the production of these three different layers. So for example, the lacrimal gland produces the aqueous layer in the middle. So this is the water component of our tears. Mm -hmm. Whereas the meibomium gland, um, it's uh, responsible for producing the lipid layer. This is the most outer layer in our tear film, which prevents the tear from evaporating too quickly. And there are also something called the goblet cells, which is responsible for the mucin layer. And this helps the tear to stick onto our eye. So when any of when there's any problem due to the increase in evaporation or a dysfunction in these glands causing a reduction in production, then the patient will have dry eye symptoms. Okay, so you're still producing tears. It's just maybe a lesser amount of tears, if you like. So um, dry eye sort of looks like your eyes are constantly dry. You're, you're sort of more irritated. Uh, irrit- mm-hmm. uh, 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 red eyes, would you, would you get a bit of red eyes as well if your eyes are dry? What, yes, I mean, what does it look like? A- Mm -hmm. So it's actually have a lot of different symptoms causing the dry eye. So patients, they will tell you they may have some burning sensation. They feel gritty. They feel um, they always want to rub their eyes or they actually can prevent with some blurring of vision, usually very transient. It can improve with blinking. When you blink your eye, your tear will actually spread in the eye. So that's why uh, when you blink a few more times, sometimes you can actually see more clearer if you are suffering from dry eyes and your eyes can also be red. So, um, when the patient presents with these symptoms and then the doctors can take a closer look to see what uh, the de- to diagnose the dry eye and to see the severity of the dry eyes. So um, I'll show you some pictures of what a uh, dry eye would look like. Um, so on the left figure, um, we have applied some fluorescein stain oh, to wow. the eye. So it's a green, it's so a green color. So pu- that's the, the pupil, um, not pupil, that's the whole eye if you the like cornea. The, the cornea, yes, that's, that's the it. Yes, the eyeball. So normally it's transparent. And then we apply the fluorescein stain, which is green. And then a normal eye will be green uh, uniformly. So you can see everything is green here. As opposed to a patient with dry eye, you see quite a lot of black spots. So these are spots where the tear film is evaporating too much. So there's not enough tears covering the cornea. And our cornea have a lot of nerves growing over it. And when these nerves get exposed to air and the external environment, the um, the patient will feel more sensitive. And that's why they have uh, a plethora of symptoms that they can have because of these uh, deficiency in the T 
tear film, leading to dry eye. Oh yeah, wow, that eye looks really dry. I mean, you can't really see the glossy, the glossy mm-hmm. green uh, fluorescence. Um, for, for our listeners, uh, if you possibly can, do join us on Facebook Live, Noreen Mayer on RTHK Radio Three. You'll be able to see and also hear Dr. Kevin Wan, who's an assistant professor from the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. So, uh, does it sort of go away by itself, or do you sort of have to, you know, put eye drops or, or other things to help it? Or is it the, the sort of thing that after resting, your eyes will sort of lubricate itself again? Actually, uh, once dry eye is very common nowadays. For example, um, there are a lot of. Um, for example, when we look at the computer screen too much, yes. so what we call these is visual terminal display. So when we're very concentrated, for example, reading a book, looking at a computer screen, our eyes actually blink a lot less. So because we're not blinking enough, so um, in this situation, then your dry eyes will be more aggravated when you're looking at a computer screen without taking an adequate break. So normally, once you have dry eyes, um, it will not go away. And there are many conditions in our environment that can worsen the dry eye. So um, for the dry eye, it really depends on how um, the, the severity of the dry eye is. So. And you mentioned, does it go away? So if it's very just mild and it's just due to some external environment, apart from the computer screen, if you're sitting in front of air conditioning, constantly having some turbulence in the environment, then this condition will also increase your tear evaporation, causing your eye to become dry. So for situations like this, they will go away as long as you take a break and perhaps uh, staying away from these uh, windy and uh, air conditioning environment. But for um, cases which are more uh, moderate to severe, for example, uh, I'll show you a photo here. Um, so in, in this photo, you can see the different severity of the dry eyes. Oh, wow. So I've talked about what a normal eye looks like. It's just all green uniformly. But as the disease progresses, not only do you get more of these black spots to appear, which has a deficiency of the tears over the eye, you also see a lot of these green dots. So these are just, these are some scratch marks. For example, even your skin, when it becomes dry, it becomes very scaly and rough. Your eye is actually, your cornea can actually suffer from this damage too. So you can see um, the severity. As the severity increases, you get more of these, a lot of these green dots, which are which are some. Um, wow, you can it looks so them pixelated. Like mark yeah, it looks almost yes, pixelated. Yes. So that's why the patient can have a lot of these foreign body sensation and their eye can become blurred because you can just imagine what the eye would look like when you look through something that's very pixelated. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah. And is is age a factor as well? I, I say that because I feel like uh, as as I as I as I age, I feel like my eyes mm-hmm. get more dry, and perhaps old people often um com- often complain about how their eyes feel dry. Yes, actually, age is uh, as. Uh, the, the, in the older population, there are more patients suffering from dry eye as well, because the eye actually have quite a number of changes that occur as the patient age. For example, um, I mentioned earlier, one of the uh, layers in the tear is called the lip layer, which is the most outer layer. Actually, there is a condition called meibomian gland dysfunction. This is actually the most common cause of dry eye. So meibomian glands are normal glands and eye responsible for producing this lipid layer. So um, as the eye ages, um, the meibomian gland will degenerate, leading to some abnormal production of the tear film. So I'll show you a photo of the changes in the meibomian gland. So um, in this illustration, um, we can see normally, we can see some glands in the eyelid. They appear to be very uniform and they appear to be very straight. Mm -hmm. And there's not much gaps in between. And the production from the gland will generate some clear um, mybum. These are normal oil that will constitute the tear film, as I've mentioned earlier. But as you age and your dry eye becomes more severe, you can see there's lots of gaps in between. So these are glands where they have actually died off and they can become more torturous as well. And they will, um, if this will lead to some abnormal production of their normal mybum. So instead of having some clear fluid, they become very oily, even like a spaghetti-like structure. And then these abnormal mybum will make up your tear film. So of course they don't function very well. So that's why older patients will have more, have a greater preference of having dry eyes too, because due to the meibomian gland dysfunction, which is the commonest cause of dry eye disease. Yeah. And can, I mean, it makes me think, can some medication also cause dry eye? Yes, of course. Um, a lot of medication have preservative in them. 
So these preservatives, if you apply them too frequently or during a chronic cause, it can actually cause uh, dry eye disease. Like the pictures I showed you earlier, the cornea becomes very rough and have a lot of pixels. So most commonly it occurs in glaucoma patients because in glaucoma patients, they need to regularly put in eye drops, sometimes one medication. And in those patients with more severe glaucoma, they need to put in sometimes three to four medications every day for a chronic duration. So these patients, um, once they've start using the glaucoma eye drops, um, almost 20 to 30% of them will develop some form and even more severe types of dry eyes. So wow. yes, medication can actually cause dry eye and most commonly from glaucoma. Yeah. Can, can it sort of be rectified? I mean, as we, uh, as we sort of in, in our childhood, they all always say eat more carrots, you know, uh, more vitamin A can promote healthier eyes. If people mm-hmm. sort of have, you know, more vitamin A, will, will that help with, with dry mm-hmm. eyes or, or will a lack of vitamin A cause it to be worse? So for dry eye, actually, there are some diets that's been proposed to help with dry eyes. So namely, it's omega-3 fatty oh. acid. So these are something you can take in the form of a supplement or from your diet. For example, a lot of fish will have uh, fish oil and omega-3. So there's actually quite a lot of studies uh, demonstrating its potential in treating dry eye disease. And so if you don't have dry eyes or you already have dry eyes, so these are some supplements you can add to your diet to help. Okay. Um, you mentioned a really good point just now, Dr. Wan, and that is sometimes when we're sitting, uh, you know, in front of the computer for long hours and underneath the central air conditioning, um, it can cause dry eyes. Will wearing glasses help sort of stop the wind from blowing into your eyes and, and sort of help with dry eyes? Mm-hmm. Yes, actually, if you are sitting in front of, for example, a fan or air conditioner blowing directly, uh, having uh, spectacles will actually help to reduce the contact with the air. So it can uh, help in the, with a bit of reducing the dry eyes secondary to this condition, okay. to this well, environment. We'll, we'll talk more about treatments just, just in a bit. But I want to ask, is dry eye permanent f- for some people? Um, usually, well, once you develop dry eye, it will stay. Uh, so what the doctors can only do is to treat the symptom and prevent it from getting worse. But of course, there are some um, situations where the dry eye is temporary. Yeah. For example, after a, a refractive surgery like LASIK or SMILE, usually the patient will have some form of dry eye. Usually it will just last a few months. Uh, usually within uh, three to six months, it will go away. So yes, dry eye can be temporary, but most of the time, if it's not due to some surgery or other factors, then usually once the patient will have them, it will either get worse or stay the same if they see a doctor. Yeah. So who are the people sort of more prone to dry eye then? So the people who've just had sort of uh, LASIK or smile surgery, Mm -hmm. um, older Mm -hmm. people, are there sort of other groups of people? Also, also if some patients, they wear contact lens. Contact lens wear actually increases the um, risk of developing dry eyes because your eye normally have uh, is exposed to the oxygen. The contact lens, even though they're good nowadays, but they can still reduce the oxygen diffusing into your eye and it will cause dry eyes too. Also, some patients, they have some rheumatological diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus disease or some other condition called Strogan syndromes. So in these patients, the lacrimal gland, which is the comp- which is the um, the organ uh, responsible for making the aqueous layer of the tear film. It becomes dysfunction and it's not producing not properly. So in these patients with rheumatological diseases, quite a lot of them actually comes to the dry eye clinic for treatment as well. Yeah. Um, can you become dependent on sort of uh, eye drops? Because I've heard before, you know, you shouldn't use too much eye drops because then your eyes will stop mm-hmm. producing tears naturally. Is that true? I'm afraid I think the connection has just uh, dropped out there. Uh, we'll try and get Dr. Wan back uh, this afternoon on the 123 show. Uh, we're chatting uh, with Dr. Kevin Wan, who's an assistant professor at the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences at the Chinese University of, of Hong Kong. Uh, right, Dr. Wan, I think we, we, we got you back. Um, I was just asking, you know, can you, can you become dependent on, um, on eye drops? I've heard from some people we shouldn't use over-the-counter eye drops too much because then your eyes will be very dependent on it and stop producing Mm -hmm. the natural tears. Uh, How true is Mm -hmm. that? Uh, That that, that is not true at all. You don't become (laughs) dependent. You don't, uh, if you're not, if you're using eye drops, it won't make your eye depend on it. It's because your eye needs the eye drop. So uh, for example, if you're you, so if you're using the eye drops, 
it's not because your eye drops make you continue to use it. You, uh, because you actually need the eye drop. So for example, just as an analogy, those patients have hypertension. They need to take their hypertensive yes. pills. So it's not like they're dependent on the hypertension pills. They actually need the medication. To regulate so the you won't blood depend, pressure. Yeah. Yes. So you need, yes, you're, yes, for sure. So you don't get dependent on it. It's actually your eye needs it. So it supplements the tear film that you're, you normally have. Because as I mentioned, maybe the patient had the tear is evaporating too much or not producing it. That's why these um, tear supplements, the eye drop will supplement to what is actually needed. Not like it's dependent on it. Yeah, well, like you said just now, it's the most common problem. I'm sure many of our listeners, myself included, have, you know, in our lifetime experienced dry eye. And it's very uncomfortable because you want to rub your eyes. You want to just, you know, not not have to blink so much. Um, so what are some of the available treatments that uh, we can do if we experience dry eyes? Mm -hmm. So actually, there's quite a lot of uh, different forms of eye lubricants you can use that's available in the market. And they... Some of them are preservative. They have they contain preservative, and some of them don't contain preservative. So they're called preservative-free eye lubricants. So for those patients that need to apply the eye drops very often, for example, more than four times a day, or they're wearing contact lenses, then uh, we would advise the patient to use the preservative-free eye lubricants. But for other situations, if you're just using it a few times, then the ones with preservative in it. Um, it will still work, but not as good because it still contains preservative. But um, the, the so the patient can seek their doctor to see what kind of uh, eye drops will work best for them. And also, um, um, talked about earlier the meibomian gland dysfunction. Um, actually, the patient uh, needs to do something called lid hygiene at home. So uh, it's something that the patient needs to do regularly. Uh, once at, le at least two to three times a day. So I'll show you a photo of what that actually is. So um, what we ask the patient is to take a cotton ball or some cotton pads and we soak it into some uh, warm to hot water around 40, um, 40 degrees Celsius. And then they will place the uh, hot cotton wipes over their um, eyelid. So this will help dissolve those abnormal uh, oil, the mybum that I've showed earlier, those spaghetti uh, like my bum. After you warm up the eye, you can actually um, wipe it away in the like this photo here. So this is something called lit hygiene that all patients can do at home and it's uh, uh, readily available because you can just use some cotton tip, I mean some cotton wipes and some warm water. Yeah. But if the situation doesn't improve with the um, eye drops or the um, lit hygiene, then actually there are some uh, physical treatment the doctors can offer at their clinic. So one example um, is called the uh, punctal occlusion. So normally our tear will drain from a punctum, a little hole that goes into your nose. So that's why when uh, when you cry, you feel something dripping in your nose because oh, the eye is connected to the nose. I didn't so, know there was a little hole sort of at the tip of yes. your eyes that drains yeah, into your corner, nose. Oh, at wow. The corner near the nose, there's uh, two little holes, one at the top and one at the bottom. But the bottom hole is responsible for draining most of the tears. So if the patient doesn't have enough tears in their eye, we can actually put in a little rubber to plug this hole so the tears in your eye can actually stay there longer. So when you have more tears, then there's more room for the tears to evaporate. To, there's more threshold and more stuff in the tears to evaporate. So this is one way we can conserve the tears in our eye. For those patients that is... Um, that, ha that, is that, that does not have enough tears in their um, eye. Some other treatments that we can have is um, that the doctor can do is called uh, vector thermal pulsation. So this is similar to the lid hygiene I've talked about. Um, there is a, it's like a goggle, an appliance that you slide into the eye and it's got like a front and a back plate to it. So it, it gently holds your eyelid. And this is a procedure that lasts around 12 minutes or so. So what it does is this uh, instrument will warm up to the uh, a temperature that will help dissolve the mybum. And then the two plates in front of and behind the eyelid will start squeezing the eyelid. So it squeezes out the abnormal uh, mybum after it reaches a certain temperature. Whoa. And this type of treatment um, after the patient receives it uh, can help. So this is just a one-time treatment and the improvement is expected to last somewhere between four months and more. Some patients can have it last for one year as well. 
So this is um, some treatments that the doctors can offer. And there's actually uh, one more treatment nowadays. It's called intense pulse light treatment. So this is an instrument that the oh, doctor IPL, will hold. IPL, the thing uh, that you use to remove hair. Yes, IPL. Oh. Yes, it's for it's a dermatological um, uh, light treatment, That's IPL. That's right. But um, a lot of studies have now shown that the IPL, intense pulse light treatment, is actually beneficial to meibomian gland disease as well. So the doctors will give a course of um, IPL. Each treatment lasts just under five minutes, and it's done... <clears throat> And it's done um, around every three to four weeks for about three to four treatments applied over the lower eyelid. And this is also helpful to relieve the dry eye symptoms. But uh, I've talked about different types of treatment, but uh, so far there's actually no study showing which uh, treatment is better than the other ones. So these are all available treatments that um, the patient can ask the doctor to see which one's available for them. And in fact, we're actually doing studies at our department to see which treatment will work better for which type of patients. Okay, are you looking so, for volunteers? Do you, do you need volunteers to-, yeah, we're, to We're to... also recruiting suitable patients so they can, uh, if they're interested, they can come uh, ask for more information from our department. Definitely. Wow, this has been so informative, Dr. Kevin Wan. Thank you so much for your sharing and for your presentations. And I'm sure our listeners learned a lot uh, from you this afternoon. Thank you very much indeed to Dr. Kevin Wan, an assistant professor from the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Bye-bye.